I use the term meatification to discuss the shift of uh, meat from the periphery of human diets, where it was for most of the history of agriculture, to the center in, in many parts of the world. So, um, and this is something that has been a, a dramatic part of, of global dietary change in the past century. Uh, in the past half century alone, there has been a phenomenal increase in the amount of per capita uh, meat consumption, a very uneven one on a world scale. But, but just to take, start with the global average, in 1960 there was about 3 billion people on Earth and the average person on Earth was consuming about 23 kilograms of meat uh, per year. In um, 2010, there was over 7 billion people on Earth and the average person on Earth was consuming about 43 kilograms of meat per year. So in a period uh, where the human population has more than doubled, the average person on Earth consuming almost twice as much meat. Now, as I've mentioned, there is uh, an incredible unevenness to that. So the average American is consuming about 120 kilograms of meat per year uh, in comparison to people in South Asia, uh, on average consuming less than 10. So this is something that is, is highly uneven on a world scale, uh, but the the, the term meatification is, is meant to convey how, uh, for, for most of the history of agriculture, uh, animal flesh and products were, were consumed on the margins of agricultural diets, and now they have become uh, at, the, at the forefront. In, in the case of the U.S., which is at the, the sort of apex of meatification, uh, animal products are, are estimated to, to compose about 40% of the mass of, of um, uh, Amer the average American diet. So there is an increasing language in, in uh, discussions of the future of world agriculture um, that uh, the, the world's food popul or the world's um, sorry that the world's agricultural production must double in the coming uh, well less than the coming half century by 2050. So the, the, this narrative that the agricultural production must double by 2050 in order to feed growing populations, uh, the current hunger, uh, extent of hunger, and uh, what often goes unsaid in that doubling narrative is that uh, dietary change is a fundamental part of that, that narrative. So right now there's over 7 billion people on Earth. By 2050 it's estimated there will be somewhere between 9 and 10 billion. Uh, there are close to about 1 billion people uh, on Earth today who are hungry and mal or malnourished. Um, but even if you account for all of the people who are hungry today, the two to three billion more people on Earth there will be by 2050, uh, that doesn't add up to anything close to a doubling narrative. Uh, or, and, and so that, um, that claim is built on an assumption uh, that dietary change is, is going to continue uh, along the trajectory of increasing animal products. So the, the meatification of diets is, is a sort of assumed part of that doubling narrative that I think needs to be problematized. We can't assume it as something that is inevitable. It's something that needs to be challenged and confronted and delegitimized. Um, so the doubling narrative uh, has, has taken root from uh, places like the, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. It's been mentioned at the UN General Assembly. It's also trumpeted by some of the world's leading agricultural corporations like uh, from Monsanto on the agro-input side to Nestle on the agro-food uh, and processed goods side. But again, the, the doubling narrative uh, you know, there will be more people on Earth by 2050, and there are many people who are underfed uh, today, but that doesn't e come anywhere near uh, close to a doubling. And in fact, there's more than enough food today. Well, uh, there, there's uh, easily enough food today to produce to feed the whole world. It's, it's just incredibly unequally distributed. Uh, so there, uh, the, the, the FAO, at the same time as it is uh, uh, noting this doubling narrative or, or trumpeting it uh, also acknowledges that there is more easily enough food to feed everyone on earth uh, if there if it was distributed much much more equitably than it is so the uh, the, the doubling narrative is is something that um, doesn't uh, uh, 
I, I think doesn't convey many of the, the very serious contemporary problems in world agriculture, and it doesn't uh, uh, recognize the, the need to, to challenge um, the trajectory of dietary change. It just sort of accepts that dietary change, the continuing meatification. So it assumes that countries, as they become wealthier and more industrialized, that people will consume more and more animal products, uh, again, rather than uh, saying that this is, is far from an inevitable trajectory and it's something that needs to be challenged. Um, and, and it needs to be challenged not only in places uh, where meatification is, is rapidly um, advancing, like fast industrializing countries like China, but in countries like uh, Canada and the United States, which uh, consume more uh, animal products per capita than, than the rest of the world.